What's going on, y'all? So Girl, what is going on? Let me just say this. I'm so glad that this episode is the almost the last episode, that next week is going to be the last episode because it is just too much drama and it is just too much, like, bombs being dropped. Like, girl, what? Okay, because, listen, I really thought that this episode was really just going to be a calm, cool, collected type of episode. We haven't really had one. We five episodes in. I said, can we just get one that's conflict diamond free? Girl, they said, no, girl. Uh-huh. We'll give you 45 minutes of it that's going to be cool or whatever. But then we're going to turn it up at the end. I said, oh, my Jesus. Anyway, so we back again for SWV and Escape, the Queens of R&B season one. Well, the only season. Episode uh, five. What is it called? Sisters with Choices. So we started off and everybody's trying to get their stuff together. We see, um, you know, the funniest part. Taj was trying to give a little lap dance, uh, strip tease type of thing over the uh, FaceTime to her husband. And he was like, mama was about to take that bra off. I said, mama, you on camera. I hope you know that. And then um, the uh, 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 her husband said, you know, Eric over here. I said, God damn. Not the sun coming in and cock blocking, okay? I said, hurry up and put them titties away. Meanwhile, you got Tamika. She on the phone with... um. You know, uh, what's that girl named Latasha? And she basically called and said, you know, well, we can talk. You guys had a talk and Latasha was like, yeah, we can come and talk. I mean, I'm at the studio right now and you can come down and we can hash this out and do whatever. I was like, girl, please. Anyway, I said, whatever talking that happened, uh, it didn't stick because look at where things are today, girl. Meanwhile, you got um Coco up there trying to clean out her closet, a mess, all right? Look like mine. Meanwhile, after that, um, we get down to the drama, okay? Tamika and Latasha do have this meetup. You know, truth be told, I would have told Latasha, bitch, come meet me at a mutual place. I don't want to come down and meet you, okay? No, I'm not going to come on your grounds. We can come into a restaurant. We can go into the park or whatever, but no. They met in the studio, and, you know, they sat down, and for once... <sighs> I only felt bad for Tamika. And it is so messed up that even in a scene like this, because this is a sisterly scene, and it just shows that all of this is really affecting a sisterhood that was once there. And you can tell how much Tamika loves her sister. And the fact that we see this so clear as day. And even when Latasha is having this conversation with Tamika, Tamika's trying to understand what's going on. Tamika's trying to get to a better place. Latasha claims she wants to get to a better place, wants to get that sisterhood back. But for me, I didn't see the emotion. I know she was sitting there with a little bit of tears, but for some reason, maybe because of all of the stuff that's been going on, I just didn't feel it. I just didn't feel it. And then once again, she's the type of person that will sit there and say, you know, um, well, we all need to take accountability and we need to do this. We need to do that. And you love throwing that word around. That's been your main word that you've been throwing around. And I feel like you don't know the definition of accountability, uh, Latasha, because you've been throwing that around. Ever since this show been on and every time you come on the screen and you put your videos up, you responding to this or you uh, putting this info out and you doing your lives and stuff and all this stuff, whatever, woo, 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 you talking about accountability and you talking about this person needs to take accountability. We need to take accountability. And I hate when you say we need to take accountability when you never take accountability yourself. Throughout this whole process, you have yet to take full accountability and mean it without throwing it off on other people as well no we're not talking about other people mama we're talking about what you did the role that you played okay in this breakdown of your sisterhood you know but hey it is what it is and i really feel bad for tamika honestly i'm not even gonna lie i feel bad for both of them because i feel at this point that sisterhood is kind of like bro it's broken i'm not gonna say that it's ir irretrievably broken but it's damn near there because i know if that was me me and my sister would never talk again Especially after all of this, because one thing that I don't do, and I said this before, don't ever, ever put my family business online, okay? Don't blast me, and this is in any type of relationship, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a, 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 a intimate relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, 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 whatever, whatever the freak it is, 
I don't want you putting it online. I don't want that back and forth. I don't need everybody. You publicly humiliated me and, you know, trying to comfort me and doing this and doing that. Because at the end of the day, that makes me feel like you don't respect me. You never respected me. And you don't want this relationship and you damn sure don't want me up in your life no more because that's exactly what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So if I was Tamika, baby, I just would have said F you and that would have been the last time we spoke. All right. And I felt bad because you could tell, like, again, Tamika was craving her sister. She want the love of her sister. She want that kinship that they had before when she was like, can I get a hug? Can I get a hug? And then she literally broke down up in her arms. I said, uh, girl. I mean, well, and I'm talking about Latasha. Like, you the big sister. And mind you, the thing that irritates me more about this when it comes to Latasha is because you are the big sister and I'm a big sister. I literally, let me tell y'all this, y'all. <clears throat> I'm going to put my own family tea out there for a little bit. Y'all know y'all little niece. I told y'all this about in one of my videos. I told y'all, you know, she been acting up a little bit, okay? And it, it's, it's, she's, been, she's been downright disrespectful and acting a little brat, being ungrateful as all hell. And earlier this week, well, today is Sunday, so last week, what day was I think it probably was Thursday or whatever. I had to call her when she got off of work and she was avoiding my call because she knew what was going on because my mom is telling me stuff. My sisters is telling me stuff. And so y'all know my mama was sick, right? And it was just around that whole situation. You would think your attitude would change. You think you would be more caring. You think you would be more thoughtful. You think you would be more grateful. You think you would be more helpful. And that just wasn't going on. She was being very, very selfish. And so I had to get into big sister mode and to put that shit in check. You know what I'm saying? So now she got an issue with me because I done told her ass off. I don't give a good goddamn. See, that's the reason. See, when you're doing stuff like that, now see, Latasha, the shit that my little sister did, that's called being disrespectful to your mama, okay? The stuff that Tamika did, that ain't being disrespectful because all of this time, nobody has ever mentioned the stuff that the mama did as if the mama is innocent and all of this stuff. Hell no. Nah. Let me tell you something. Me and my sister will get through that. You know, she'll be down here later. She'll get over it. But, um... You know, sometimes you got to put your foot down and you as the big sister, you supposed to be controlling this and um, putting the kibosh on this and getting that sisterhood back on track. But yet you not doing that. You contributing to it and letting it continue to go on and go on and go on. And then you trying to black. Girl, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. Moving on, moving on. Because I, I wasn't feeling that. I mean, it was cute. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like it was for sure on um, Latasha part because it didn't stick. It didn't stick, bitch. Moving on. They got the girls coming together and they're doing dance auditions or whatever for the whole tour. Um, SWV get there, then Candy and then, well, Candy don't show up because Candy got something else to do. I like the fact that it was going down. Um, who is the best dancer in SWV? Well, the best dancer would have to be Taj, okay? And then Lily was like, the worst dancer would be me. And then they said, the worst dancer up in Escape, of course, is Candy, the one that ain't here. And we already know that because on that still kicking it, I remember when they had, uh, I think it was Andrea Kelly was up there trying to teach them some dance moves. And y'all know Andrea Kelly and her strong ass and the way that they, I don't care what nobody say. Andrea Kelly is controversial at best because bitch, why do you still got that last name? That's one. But when she be getting down, she be getting down. Them booty cheeks be going like this. I be like, how is your ass like that? You know, but you know, it is what it is. She was doing what she was doing, and Candy couldn't keep up. So we already know that Candy can't dance. And then Tamika said, bitch, I was eight months pregnant up in a video when I was getting down. You know what I'm saying? I was doing what I had to do. I said, all right, all right, do you, you know. So they went on ahead, picked the winners and all this stuff. I was saying, you know, y'all cute enough for Escape and SWV. Y'all ain't on the level for some of these other girls. But, hey, get your shine on, you know. And then it was really cute or whatever. That charge got up there. She was dancing with them. She was having fun. See, I was liking moments like this, right? Everything was calm, cool, and collected. Next thing we know, we see Coco and them meeting up, okay? SWV meeting up. First, it was Taj and Coco sitting there, um, and they talking, you know, Coco smoking the hookah, and then Lily popped up, right? And um, Coco was like, give me a kiss. And then Lily was like, mm -hmm. Coco said, uh-uh, on the lips. I said, excuse me? A part of me would like to see it. 
No, all of me would like to see it. You know, because like, as soon as it said that, y'all know how I am. It just instantly goes to, huh. You know, and literally the people been telling me that you look bad or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I said, now Coco, what's going on? You know, I was like, see, I like when people can play around with their sexuality. That was funny. I like it. I said, you, you know what, Coco? You said that like y'all was bunching coo uh, bumping coochies already. And that's cute. That's fine or whatever. I wouldn't be surprised with these girls group. That's probably why it be so much tension going on because some of y'all just be wanting to lick, 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 lick. And y'all can't take it, okay? Girl, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's what's going on in that skate because you know they all, damn near all of them probably then lick the, click the two. Let me stop. Let me stop, okay? It's like, uh. Anyway, so they get down trying to figure out what's going on with Lily and Sister Hot Pussy, okay? Her book. She said, girl, let me tell you something. You would have thought that it'd be so easy to um, write erotica, but it is not. You got to get yourself in that mind frame. You got to come up with all these, you know, visual imagination and put the put it put the words to the page and everything. And you know, you know, like clearly, I want your book to be like, cause what is you? Let's say if you're talking about. Uh, his dick came up on my ass and he just into me from behind and he just jammed that shit up in there and I was like oh shit you know something like that cause bitch if I read that shit and it be like and then his cop entered me and he thrust uh uh as soon as I hear and I see the word cock I'm, I'm turning it off I'm turning it off okay I don't want to hear it I don't want to see it I don't want to read it okay because I feel like cock is for another type of uh, uh, people and it ain't us Nigga, we say dick up in this bitch, and I don't even like that, okay? That ain't my ministry, but it just sounds a little bit better. Cock just sounds very slavery-ish. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And some of y'all say that. Some of y'all say that. Give me your cock. You know, it sounds like the little fake white girls when they be up in the point of like, oh my God, just give me your cock. I want all of it. <laughs> and I be like, uh-uh. Switch to the Ebony channel, okay? Give me that dick, nigga. That's what I want, okay? Let me tell you something. The shit that I be watching. I watch gay points and them niggas be up in there. They're like, yeah, nigga, give me that dick. I be like, ah, shit. Give it to him, bitch. <laughs> he said give it to him. Give it to him. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me move on. Let me move on. Because Taj had to drop a bomb on them about this bomb number one, Okay. Drop the stuff on them about the little situation that happened between her and Tamika when they was at the little rehearsal hall or whatever, going over the set list and going over the graphics and all that stuff. And they was trying to figure out who going to end the songs with what, you know, we should end the songs, the concerts with our biggest songs, okay? Weak and understanding, you know? And that's okay. That's cool or whatever because truth be told, Weak is like everybody in their mama knows Weak, Okay. People in our demographic, we know understanding. You know what I'm saying? And y'all know what demographic I'm talking about. Black. Maybe a little bit of Latino. Okay? We know weak. You know, we know brown. I mean, uh, understanding. But everybody in their mama know weak. Okay? Um, and so, honestly, it was just getting on my nerves because this was the first instance where, you know, Taj comes to them and tell them. Basically, they said, um, we ain't shit. We ain't relevant. You know, we ain't got the numbers. We ain't got this. And, you know, and I just want them to stop this whole situation. And this is what it comes down to. Because it came up a couple of times. Tiny brought it up. Tamika brought it up. Talking about, you know, sales. Talking about um, followers and stuff on social media. Oh, Tiny and... um. You know, uh, uh, Candy, they have a bigger following. You know, uh, Ty said, they told, she told me that, uh, uh, they got way more followers than us all combined. Okay. And I said, okay, that's fine. But you do understand that followers and, you know, all these numbers do not equate to selling out shows, do not equate to selling out, you know, um, albums, selling out singles or whatever. Okay. Because if that's the case, just because you have 7 million followers, uh, uh, Tamika, a.k.a. Tiny, or, or Candy has her 13, 15 million followers, who knows? I'm just throwing out numbers, okay? That does not mean and equate that that is going to be a guarantee that if you drop a project, people are going to go and buy it. It does not mean that it's going to put ass in the seats. Okay, because y'all two had different pro. A lot of people didn't even know Candy prior to Escape 
when she got on to Real Housewives of Atlanta. A lot of her following came because of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, okay? Let's be 100% honest about that. We, most of us that's watching this show, we knew who Candy was before she got on Real Housewives of Atlanta. But see, she's been on Real Housewives of Atlanta way more than she's been doing music, like putting out music for herself and with the group in this tenure that she's been on there. So people know her way more for being a housewife than being an actual musician, being an actual artist, being an actual producer and stuff like that. Yeah, early on in the seasons, we seen her do a little of this and do a little of that with Kim. Baby, we don't count that bullshit, okay? Um, but now we're not talking about that. Okay. We're talking about the drama that's going on on housewife. We ain't talking about the singing or nothing like that. Okay. And the people that's looking at real housewives of Atlanta, they're not all thinking about, Oh, let me go buy this escape record. Let me go get this, um, candy record or whatever. Let me go get a ticket to her show. Because if that's the case, we will not be in this predicament. All these artists that got millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of followers on Instagram, millions of followers on Twitter, they put out songs, they put out records, they will sell. If, if we go by that logic that y'all keep on throwing out there about the numbers and the followers and all this stuff, if they had all of that, then every time they put out a project, right, they should still have the same amount of uh, people buying their albums. Uh, supporting their stuff or whatever, right? The show should always be sold out. And we know that that's not the case because look at one particular person, like somebody had to throw up in there and I had forgot all about this. Remember when Sweetie put out her little uh, EP? Sweetie got millions of followers, I'm pretty sure. Sweetie Pretty and all of that. That Pretty Privilege and everything else came through and flopped on her ass. Mama sold 7,000 freaking um, little EP copies out of all those followers that she had. Okay? So, numbers don't equate to sales. Numbers of followers do not equate to sales, okay? There's been influencers that have millions of followers that put out product and stuff and can't sell stuff and had to shut it down. I remember one of them. I said, damn, you know, that was crazy. So I just wish they would stop doing that, all right? Stop bringing up this number aspect of it because that's literally not how it works. If people gravitate toward whoever they want to gravitate towards and if they like it and they're going for the nostalgia and truth be told, you probably would have got more people that would have been way more interested than what we already were if, honestly, we had not seen this show. The show would have been good for promo if it did not work out the way that it worked out, meaning it's been so goddamn negative. And I honestly feel, had we not seen the show, uh, this show had not been brought to the, uh, you know, our TV screens, we could have, they still could have got a whole bunch. They could have sold out without it because we were like, damn, escape. SWV, yes, let's do that because, baby, I'm ready to go. You know, I, I had all my hopes up because I was ready to go. And I said, I don't give a damn who is singing first. I don't care who opened it because I want to see y'all both. And at this point, what it comes down to is ego. It comes down to ego on both sides. And it, it's, it's, just, it's just ridiculous. And the way that they're working is I'm surprised that a show actually happened, you know, because... With all of this, never was going to be no tour. Meanwhile, you got Lily up here playing with her daughter's doll, getting all that stuff or whatever. That's fine. Um, girl, they talking about the outfits and what they want to put on. And, you know, <laughs> Lily talking about she don't want to be wearing the mess that they be wearing on Escape. The way that Lily was shading them, Escape, about the outfits. And then later, Tamika was shading SWV about them and their pull-ups and their comeback boots and their, you know, styles from the 90s and all this stuff. Girl, it was hilarious, all right? And so, I'm just like, y'all don't really need to be in unison about what y'all wearing because y'all two different groups. So, that means technically it's going to be two different styles. So, just do what makes you comfortable and what you've been doing. That's just all that it is, you know? I don't, I don't get it. Like, oh, oh, okay. Meanwhile, you get Candy and um Coco coming together with Steven. Mind you, I thought Steven was the graphic designer. He the one putting together the set list. And I'm like, so what? He, he getting paid for multiple jobs at this point? 
Girl, they was going down the set list, and Coco just really wasn't here for it. Coco was like, uh-uh, we not starting with that one. Okay, we gonna start with that one. No, we don't want to do that one. Oh, that's ugly. That's ugly. That's ugly. Okay, so who ending the show? You know, we should end the show with both our uh, y'all greatest, biggest songs, closes, or whatever week, and then understanding. No, 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 no. We not finna end with um weak and then understanding. We gonna do understanding then weak. Cause we ain't finna be up here singing like we uh opening up for y'all and all this stuff. And again, it's the ego type of thing that's coming through. And truth be told, I mean, I get it. I get it. But if y'all really wanted to do a tour, I can see them one night closing, like doing an alternative, alternating. You know what I'm saying? On this show, y'all open. This show, y'all open, we close. You open, we close. You open, we close. And vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like every other show, every other show. I mean, it probably would be a lot more work to, you know, figure out, but really it's not. But at the end of the day, when I'm thinking about it and putting these type of groups together, it's like, how does that work? And then it, and, and then it makes me think about these tours that's going on currently that has multiple artists on there. So how do they decide which artists to go on and which artists to headline? You know, um, currently, Escape is on this R&B music tour, you know, um, and they had a show last night. Tamar was on there. Some other people was on there. And it's a collective of artists that were there. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, how y'all determine who gonna come on first and who gonna close for all that when it's multiple artists? I wanna know the ins and outs of that, okay? Um, because it took all of y'all to sell out that arena, to be quite honest. Let's be real, because everybody wasn't there just for y'all. Everybody was there for multiple artists or all of those artists, you know? So, hey, it is what it is. And again, this is not your tour, this is everybody's tour, but the egos are just enormous on both sides, okay? You know, it, <coughs> I hate the way, hold up. <coughs> I had some pepper, black pepper earlier. I had some spicy food and um, there it is. It got caught finally in my throat. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no, it's like, all of this ego stuff that's going on, I'm just like, it's, it's taken away from the, oh, the hypeness of it. I just can't stand it. And at the end of the day, you know, Coco, SWV, I know y'all got y'all stuff together or whatever. And y'all like judging Escape because, of course, they don't have their stuff together. But there was once a point in time where y'all ain't have y'all stuff together. Y'all were just like Escape, okay? Y'all just finally got it together and matured. And, you know, worked out the kinks. Escape's still in that process, you know? Um, and also, I just don't like the fact that it does feel like the groups are being downplayed on each side. Like, sometimes it feels like SWV is downplaying Escape. And then sometimes it feels like Escape is downplaying SWV. When in reality, y'all both great R&B black girl groups that we need, you know? And it's one thing that the fans are doing it. But then y'all doing it to each other. That's just uh to me, you know. Um, moving on from that, <coughs> you got Tiny and them, Tiny and Candy on her way, on their way to go to the guy, um, to whatever that's gonna do their outfits, okay. And then you got uh Coco and Taj and Jalen on their way to go to the guy, same person, all right. And my whole thing about this is everybody shows up. Tiny is hilarious, all right? Because, listen, that little scene with her and Zanik, let me tell you something. At the end of the day, when they talk about followers and stuff and they keep on putting up, you know, Tiny got this platform, Candy got this platform. Truth be told, I will feel it. I, this is just my opinion. Tiny has had a reality show with the Family Hustle, okay? But Tiny has been marred in a lot of controversy during that show, and especially the way that the show had went off. So you do understand, and this is what I feel like people, some people are not factoring in, because just because you got followers or whatever, just because you had this show, your show hasn't been on, on, on TV in years, okay? Tiny. And so... A lot of people just now realizing that you can actually sing, you know, and then 
um, you had controversy with that, that whole situation about, you know, y'all drugging women, which never, anything never, any came out of that. Nothing never came out of that or whatever. But people got turned off from that. So that could have been an issue as well. You know what I'm saying? So while you up here talking about numbers and shady and being all of that stuff, you got to look at what you contribute as well. And, you know, the negative aspect of things of that too, you know, and then y'all could have also, both y'all could have had way more people, but they already knew about the, the drama that's going on in this group. And we knew about Coco's attitude before we knew that she had the, you know, bipolar depressant situation that was going on before they explained it on the show. So it's pros and cons to people want to Come to you and the people that could have been there but then fell off because of certain things or whatever and y'all not putting that into play either you know so y'all need each other at this point you know yeah y'all can equally go out and do y'all own things successfully but at this point y'all need each other to come together and to do this correctly and i wish we could put the ego to the side and understand that okay you know y'all both shading each other up in the um cars on the way it was funny all right it was funny you know i ain't even gonna lie gave me some shits and giggles but when they got to that goddamn man i said i'm thinking wait a minute so you mean to tell me y'all couldn't afford to get angle what's her name angel brinks or something okay y'all know she known for doing all them damn rhinestones and see-through shits or whatever with the nets and all that stuff first of all i am tired of seeing that prom dress type of shit that she be doing because everybody and their mama want to copy it and do the same thing so it's overdone but at the same time this is the best that y'all can do but going to this dude going to this dude and his boyfriend who makes stripper clothes girl if i was swv i would have felt some type of way too like girl what is this lily came up in there and he was like lily was looking like what the hell is this i'm looking for you know stuff to be done and all this stuff i'm looking like what is this you making stuff for uh, every stripper down here in atlanta okay and i was just like well he do make it for the strippers and then you know he's trying to get their styles you know we have all of escape there mind you escape had the show that they was rehearsing for earlier last week she uh, uh um tasha didn't come to rehearsal but she did come to the show to the sound check and they said, oh, her energy was on point then, you know, gave a good show. But then they had another show that she didn't show up for. And I said, oops. But she showed up to this little dress fitting and all this stuff. And mind you, I was like, Tamika, I thought y'all made up. Because she was like, she thinks she Diana Ross. Give her the Diana Ross treatment. She want to do different dresses and stuff or whatever from us and all that stuff. You know, and... I thought Latasha was finna go on her bag about that, but she took it with stride and said, I mean, hey, look at where Diana Ross at. I mean, but you know Diana Ross. And at first, I thought they was about to bring up the Soul Train Award, because y'all know, am I the only one that kind of noticed? Um, she got a song out, I think it's called Afraid. And if you look at the cover of the song, she in that same green dress with the same hair that she had on at the Soul Train Awards. So that is the reason why she didn't show up and wearing the same thing that the other girls wore and tried to make it seem like she didn't get the memo about the clothing and about what was being uh, worn or whatever. Because you, 9 out of 10, they did that uh, uh, photo shoot right before the Soul Train Awards and then you just came on alone because you probably was running a little bit late and said, F it, I'm not changing or whatever. And I already had it set up that I was going to wear this. And that's just what it was. That's what it felt like. Okay. And that seems a little bit more plausible to me. Even though the dress was cute. And I ain't even going to lie. It was cute. But girl, but girl, anyway, so they was getting the girls measurements and all of this stuff. And, you know, um, Tiny said, don't tell them my measurement. And old boy was like, okay. 31 and she was like damn i said don't tell him my measurement and then after that baby it gets into the whole debate of who gonna go last and who got more of singers uh, uh uh followers and who got this and who got that and then you know lily was like we don't need all of this stuff and you know all these dressing rooms and, and, and a piano in a dressing room or whatever the whole time that they was going in on each other i was sitting here laughing Candy was trying not to laugh. Lily is just fed up about everything that's happening. And it is unfortunate. Again, it is very much unfortunate that they keep on getting into these baseless, egotistical um, back and forth about who going to do this and who going to do that. And, you know, I, I got more followers and this person should be able to do this and we ain't this. I mean, like, come on. 
if y'all come into something like this and you can't put your ego to the side and just, I don't know. I don't know. And yeah, I understand the money aspect, but I think Candy said they, they ain't even end up making nothing with this show. So why are we doing all of this? You know? Um, and let's be clear. When it comes down to the debate about SWV's weak <laughs> and escapes understanding, as I said once before, weak is the better song and the strongest song and the well most known song, okay? Two good songs, but everybody in their mama know, I get so weak in the knees, I can hardly speak. Everybody in their mama know that, okay? So, you know, that shouldn't even be a question, but hey, it is what it is. And I felt bad for Jalen to have to sit there and to watch all of this go down. Well, he was standing there, and he was just looking like the way that they was going back and forth. Jalen said he going back to school. That's where your ass needs to be. So I, I was like, well, this what happens up in the music business, girl. You know, it's a lot of cattiness. A lot of cattiness. <clears throat> and the ending is what got me. Because I remember looking at Candy speak on it and she said, oh, just wait till next week. And I was like, well, where is this stuff that's supposed to happen next week? You know, because we're literally at the end of the show and I don't see nothing. Babe, when it came off that last commercial, the girls came together and they got some proof in the pudding. They came together with a freaking folder that had text message receipts or whatever, all printed out with Rocky talking about Rocky up here trying to take kickbacks from the promoter that he got for the girls, okay? And then basically made it seem like Latasha had something to do with it or she knew something about it or whatever. And see, this is the thing that I cannot stand with Latasha. You want to get your ass up on your... um on your IG live and you want to do that snot cry. I mean, had the snot all up in your mouth, girl, just looking pathetic. And you wanted us to feel for you and we didn't feel nothing for you. You want to keep on saying, I don't know where that money went. I don't know nothing about that. I was just asking for clarity and all this stuff and woo, woo, woo. You get up here talking about some, you got an open marriage. I said, bitch, y'all doing gospel and open marriages and stuff like that. I don't know nothing about the church like this. I'm just sitting here like, damn, you starting off with scandals and stuff. But uh, maybe you will fit right in. I seen something about Fred Hammond and the way he treating his daughter who on that show Grown in Gospel. Oh, I said, baby, they, she probably might just fit right in because scandal with scandal with scandal. He a deadbeat and she a, a thief. So, hey, it is what it is, you know. Um, meanwhile, you doing all of this and talk about, you don't know nothing about the money. You want clarification. We got an open marriage and I seen what's going on and woo, 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 woo. I don't know what's happening. I'm just trying to get down to the bottom of it. I'm trying to talk to my sister and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, when people be presenting you with the evidence of what's been going on and showing you that they're just not talking to talk or whatever, just to be talking and to be putting out false allegation, you have a habit of just sitting there and acting like, what? What you talking about? Who? Uh-uh. So you trying to say this? You trying to say this happened? What is this? Because when they presented the text messages that had Rocky's number and the promoter's number on there, basically, she was like, what you talking about? So you trying to say, I knew about this? Now, hold on. Who? My husband? You said he did this? My husband would never do this. My This? What? What? No, what is this? They give her the printed out text messages. They give her the stuff and they showing her what is being said. You're barely reading it and you're just like, huh? What is this? I said, bitch, that is a def deflecting tactic to make it seem like you don't know what you're talking about, to make it try to seem like the girls are just lying on you or whatever. And again, the proof is in the pudding right there in front of your goddamn face. And you just don't want to see it because 9 out of 10, you already knew about it and you're um probably in on it as well, okay? Because the way that they made that text message sound, it made it sound, Rocky made it sound like you knew and you was on board, so you was trying to get the girls, he was trying to use you to get the girls on board in order so he can use this promoter and so that he can get this kickback, $20,000 extra. I said, ain't this about a bitch to uh, Latasha? 
this show ain't helping you. And when you put them lives out uh, earlier last week or at the end of last week, baby, let me tell you something. This part right here on this episode, it further just convinced a lot of us, regardless of the receipts that we got from um, Tamika, um, it just further convinced a lot of us that y'all, y'all stole that girl money. Y'all stole that girl money. And you want to play dumb? You want to play dumb? It's not a, It's not working because we see right through it. We see right through it, and we're caught on to the way that you respond to stuff to make it seem like you don't know what's going on, but we know that it's an act because you do know what's going on, and we're not buying it, okay? But anyway, next week is the next, the last episode. Thank goodness. Whew, look, because I'm so tired of going in on these girls. I need to have a break. I need to just go put SW, make a SWV and escape playlist. And so I can remember all of the good times before um, this show came on and just ruined a lot of stuff for me because I like to listen to my music and I know all the shit that's going on behind the scenes. All right. I listened to Beyonce. It was a lot knowing that Jay-Z cheated on that girl. Okay. Because I was like, damn, bitch, did you at least bite his ass or whatever? I mean, I know you let Solange whoop his ass up in the elevator and you just move so that your dress won't get trampled on. But what else did you do, girl? What else did you do? Oh, I put my song out there or whatever. That nigga had her down bad. Had her all up in lemonade, walking through cornfields and, and jumping off buildings and shit, bitch. I said, uh-uh, don't ever let a nigga let you do no shit like that. Meanwhile, I ain't need to know that. I ain't need to know that. Meanwhile... A lot of us can already knew some pipe was going on, but you know, I don't need to know all this backstory, okay? Because I don't want to change my opinion. Because for a minute, I couldn't stand Jay-Z. I said, God damn. And then I felt some way about Beyonce still being with him, but you know. Because, bitch, you ain't finna publicly humiliate me, all right? I don't need to know about all my artists that I like and their backgrounds and all of the bullshit that's going on. Put that out when you no longer performing or whatever. That's what you do. That's what you do. Because this show right here, a big mistake. A big mistake, baby. Okay? We'll see how long we still talking about it by the time it goes off. And, and, and who's still going to be interested. But uh, Escape is going on tour. It's just the three of them. It's just the three of them. But, hey, y'all gonna go? I think I might look into some tickets. Because they do put on a good-ass show. I ain't need to go lie. You know? Coco was like, all these slow songs. And it was kind of slow. But when they get into it, they get into it. Okay? But, anyway, I'm gonna get up off of here. Because I'm getting a little bit hot. I'll see y'all later. All right? Peace.